Hi, my name is Wayne. I'd like to share a story with you about what happened with a shark and a ski and myself. Four kilometers offshore at Durban, 2008. I, uh, I spent a lot of time in the ocean. I surf, I paddle. I sometimes just go for a swim. And one of the realities that we always look at when we're in the ocean is the reality of our fellows that live with us there, the sharks. And I've seen a few sharks, but I've never been attacked by one, but I did on a ski get attacked while I was paddling. I was doing some paddle training. I was about four k's offshore and I got attacked by a shark. I'd like to tell you about that. And then I'd like to tell you about a set of circumstances around the shark attack just before and just after. So what was happening, I was training. I was uh, four k's out to sea. It was the afternoon and um, there was nothing that led me to believe that there might have been any more or less activity than what I've seen in the water. While I was paddling, suddenly, just out of the complete calmness of being out there, I just simultaneously heard a huge bang on the back left hand side of my ski and I felt this incredible force just bang into the back of the ski to the point that it lifted the ski up. I was going forward and it lifted the ski up and threw me out of the ski onto the right hand side of the ski. It happened really quickly. The noise was super loud as the shark's teeth went through the fiberglass and the foam. So as it threw me into the water, I fortunately still had my paddle in my hand. I climbed out of the water, back onto my ski. The adrenaline hit me. I thought the shark was coming back for a second bite and I began to shout at it and got my paddle ready to fight it. And as I climbed back on the ski, I knew instantly the ski would begin to sink because there had to be a hole in the back. I had no idea how big it was. And fortunately, by the nature of skis, they're hollow. They've got a polystyrene stringer on the inside. And as the ski sank from the back, it trapped the air up in the rest of the ski. And so the ski was positioned like that. The water pressure was holding the air up in the ski like that. And it allowed me to paddle slowly, but I could paddle and I started to paddle back to shore. As I was paddling, I was sinking more and more steadily. At that stage, it was dark. I got stuck in the shark nets. The ski normally travels over the nets, but now I got stuck in the nets because I was down like that and there wasn't much. By the time I hit back to the nets, there wasn't much left of the ski sticking up above the water. I was battling to paddle it and stay on it. It was difficult for me because the adrenaline had subsided at that point and uh, I was very concerned and I, and I had to get off the ski which I didn't really want to do and try and untangle it from the nets and because and, I didn't want to leave it behind. I could have swum from the nets but I wanted the ski as a memento. At that stage as I say it was dark and um, the place where I, I came in on the ski was a fair distance about two k's away from where I'd launched. So I emptied the ski and I put it on my shoulder and I carried it back down to my car and I phoned my family to say I know I'm late, everything's fine. When Wayne came home, uh, he called us out. I didn't expect to see anything major, maybe like a little crack. He had, he just told us over the phone that he had, you know, something had happened. And we came out, and I was, I was shocked, shocked to see, and frightened to see uh, the the actual bite with the shark teeth marks still in the ski. It was really scary. Um, it was, it was terrible. I just couldn't help imagining that in, in his body, you know, could have been anywhere in his body. And he was so far out that it could have been the end for him. I'd heard of guys getting hit by sharks, but the time that they got hit, it had never taken a chunk of the ski out. And um, that's, that's what happened. It was, it was an incredible experience. I thank God that I came through it. But the story I'd like to tell really is the story behind that story. It began a couple of days before the incident. I was on the beach and I was praying with my friend Jason and we'd been fasting and praying. And my prayer at that time would be to see more of the supernatural arm of God. As the Holy Spirit withdrew and, and we knew it was time to go, I said to Jason, I, I, we'll walk up together. I'm just gonna go for a swim. Jason was in his work clothes. I had a pair of baggies on. I brought down with me in a t-shirt. 
and, and so I went and I dived in the water and I came out of the water. And while I was walking up the beach, Jason was walking down the beach with his Bible open and reading aloud. And he, and he said to me, when I got close to him, he said, listen to this, I feel to read it for you. And he read it with authority. And he, and he said he felt, he felt to give it to me, to, to, to share it with me. And that he didn't know why, because I wasn't a man who was often afraid. But as he read it, it just did something inside my spirit. It, it just, like, I haven't experienced before. The scripture often touches my spirit, but it just, it, it almost went off like a bomb inside me. It just resonated deep inside me. To the point of, it stayed with me all the way home. When I got home for dinner, I said to the family, guys, tonight we're not going to say thank you. We're not going to say grace. I just, I'd like to read you this portion of scripture. And I read them just that portion of the Psalm 91. The angels of the Lord will protect you. You will not stub your foot upon a stone. Tread upon the lion and the cobra. Trample the lion and the serpent. Because you love me, says the Lord, I'll protect you. And, and my children and my wife, they, they said, why, what are you reading that to us for? You know, it's nice, but why are you reading it to us? I said, I, I don't know. Jason read it to me on the beach today. And it's just, it's just done something to me. It's, it's beautiful. I just wanted to share it with you guys. And the following day I had an appointment. My first appointment in the morning was with my lawyer. And I was early for the appointment and I'd been meditating on that Psalm 91, the entire Psalm. It's a beautiful Psalm. And I'd been meditating on it in the morning. And I was outside my lawyer's office, chatting on my phone. And a big gold car has come and parked in front of me. And the number plate on that gold car said Psalm 91 on it. So I know that the Lord talks, He talks through things in the natural world. And so I was cognizant of the fact that now He was talking to me through Psalm 91. I'd felt it in me and now I was getting an affirmation of that. And so I began to pray for the rest of the day and just meditate on that. I thought something was going to happen to me. The following day was a Saturday. I was at my desk at home. I was doing some paperwork. But I was praying. And the Holy Spirit was alive and with me. And I took the opportunity of, of asking the Holy Spirit out of, out of that psalm, why the Father had chose to written there twice, you'll tread upon the lion and the cobra, trample the young lion and the serpent. And I have a Bible that has a Hebrew translation at the back. And young lion translates to tanin, in Hebrew tanin. So I went to the back of the Bible and I, and I looked to see what that meant. And one of the translations of Tanin said monster, monster of the deep, or sea monster. And I was absolutely amazed. I just, I couldn't put together what God was trying to tell me or was telling me and I just couldn't pick it up. But I figured something was going to happen so I was praying and I continued to pray at my desk. At that particular time I was training for an adventure race where it was recommended you would take a cell phone inside a waterproof bag with you. And I'd asked my wife to buy me a cheap phone from a second-hand shop, a disposable if you will, and she did. But at this particular point, after reading that, I picked up the phone, I don't know why, and I wondered to myself if it worked. And I saw the numbers on the side and I dialed the SIM card into the, dialed the PIN number rather, into the phone. And the phone switched on. And the welcoming message on the phone came up on the screen as saved by the owner that had it previous to me. It said, you are protected by Psalm 91. So I began to pray and I knew the Lord was talking to me. And the next day was the attack that I was telling you about. When I was out at sea, I forgot all about Psalm 91. I was full of adrenaline, as I said, charged up. 